Good morning to everyone. This is Pete Androcus Macinta with you on this Sunday, the 14th, right? 11th, okay, I can't read. Yeah. All right. Near side, folks. Yeah. All right. Cornerstone Assembly, Independent Pay Calls to also Macinta Ministries with you right here on Facebook. Uh, before we get started, I noticed that as I looked at the videos that I have online on my page, I notice that when people come to the videos, all they're, all they're saying is just pictures for about maybe a few dozen of them, right? And I thought, oh, there's the, you don't know what the title is, and you don't know what the passage is, and you don't know what the date is. And so from now on, I'm going to try and remember to, number one, uh, have the title image up for the first 15 or 20 seconds, so Facebook records that, and you see that, and then go to the other screen it says we'll be hopefully on uh, live streaming active at 11 o'clock if it is 11 o'clock in the morning depending on what the thunderstorms are 11 o'clock eastern time and whatever the time would be over in uh, on utc so uh, and of course that changes because when we go back to uh standard then it's got to go i have to add six hours no five hours ago. I do believe, yeah, five hours to have to add five hours to whatever 11 o'clock is, which would be what? 15. Right. So it's 1500 UTC right now. When we go back to standard time, which I can't control, uh, we'll be back to what? 1600 UTC. Uh, so you'll see that. I hope you remember to do that from time to time. Every time, really. Uh, have that up on the screen so you know. What the message is, and so I'll try to do that, and I'll try to modify that. Plus, also I'll contact Facebook, give them a suggestion that if they want to show those icons, that's okay. But also, when you put a mouse over, when you do mouse over, show the title, or at least have the title under, or something like that. Uh, have the other information on there because all you see is the same picture for what you know, what 36, 48 uh, videos that we have up online. And so you don't know what the message is. So uh, I'll give them that suggestion. But I have a suggestion for everyone, including myself. If we want the true peace of God, we want to go for it. And then we have to kind of endeavor to get it. Okay, now, yes, when you get saved, there's a level of peace that comes to us. And uh, that's okay. But as we go through life, there's different troubles that come along and pressures and and, of course, the world is changing for the worse all the time. And so, therefore, uh, you, you and I need to know how to maintain the peace of God in our life throughout all of these things. And it does take practice, and there's things that we've got to do. A lot of people think Christianity is just sit back and you're blessed by grace and, and all that. But you're, you're given grace, but you got to use it. Let me see. Can I give an illustration right here? Someone can give you a flashlight, right? Happy birthday or whatever, have a flashlight. And, uh, but what good is it if you don't use the flashlight, right? So it's the same way. Here's the flashlight. So we got all these blessings in God. We got the peace of God. But we got to learn how to turn it on and make it brighter. Even, okay? So, and that's what the Word of God will do, do for us this morning, at least in four ways. Now, there's more ways than this, okay, that we uh, get into this. Back in the 1980s, I was struggling with depression, and so the Lord showed me numerous things that I could do if I really want to get the peace of God. It's up to me. If I really want to have the peace of God, if I want to get out of depression, now some people just stay there because, oh, no, get attention. Oh, woe is me. Uh, then they wind up taking medication and things like that, and then they sometimes they wind up as situation whereby they're financially poor and so then they got to go to state for this to go to state for that and all and uh whoa you know uh, you don't want to fall in that trap so the lord helped me to get out of depression in a number of ways but once you get out you got to stay out too so you got to protect yourself many many times for example when you whatever's in your house uh make it uplifting uh, make a point to the Lord, by the way, you have a new backdrop, too, so just seeing the, the rack of tracks all the time, and uh, I thought, well, we had these upstairs, okay? What happened is when we came to Cambridge in 1990 that time, 
89, 90, 91, 92, that neighborhood, uh, we were with the Sons of God. We were on mission with the Sons of God. And people donate money and things like this to use in our church. And we used some of these. When we had a uh, location on Race Street, uh, we're no longer with the Sons of God. Of course, we dropped out of the home mission system. And But I'll have a number of these that were never, ever used. So there you go. This one is from Genesis, talking about Abraham. And sometime back at Cornerstone, we had a whole series of lessons on God's powerful promise to Abraham. It's powerful. You cannot overcome it. It's going to happen. You cannot. <laughs> you can't stop it. This is not the message this morning. But here, this is from Genesis chapter 12. Not too sure what verse here. But God says, and you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Right now, it doesn't seem like that. Because from Abraham, we get, we get both Jews and Arabs. <laughs> and a lot of times they're not. It's not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood out there. You know that very well. And, of course, a lot of the Arabs are Muslim. And that makes it even worse a lot of times if you are a Muslim that, which how, how I phrase this, as you read the Quran, you focus upon those verses where it says, conquer the earth and, and all this sort of stuff. And you come across people like us, then you tax us, and if we don't give in or something like that, then you just kill us. I'm not making that up. Look it up for yourself, okay? And I'm not being mean. I'm telling you the truth. And so, but right now, it doesn't seem like the nations of the earth are blessed, but we will be, amen? And we're blessed right now. You can't see it on the screen, can you? Yes, you can. Up here, there's the answer, Jesus Christ, okay? I'm bring my hand out over here. Okay, there's the answer, Jesus Christ. All right, he took our sins upon the cross. And he just didn't take our sins upon the cross. He took our place, my place and your place upon the cross. So, uh, there we are. That's part of the blessing. Why doesn't God do something he did right there? And he will. Okay. Right now, this is where people need to stop. Because if you don't stop there, then you're going to wind up in damnation, hell, for all eternity. The second death, the lake of fire, as is recorded in Revelation. Do you think I can get to this today? <laughs> All right. For I will, for godly peace of mind. Now, really, when I wrote this years back, I just had the peace of mind. You can have peace of mind, but it's not of God. You could be doped up or something like that, or you could be mesmerized by some type of teaching, but you can have a peace, but it's not really the peace of God. Now, we want the peace of God. So we're going to go to Psalm 119. And let me bring that up on the screen for you at this time. As I've told you before, I am myopic, nearsighted. And so therefore, I've got to look at the screen just a little bit more closely from time to time. We're going to read Psalm 119, the section called Beth. And Psalm 119, uh, each section is an acrostic of whatever the Jewish letter is noted. And this one, Beth, probably the equivalent of a letter B or and beta in Greek. So I'm going to start off with verse 9, and we'll go to verse 16. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you, for let me not wander from your commandment. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimony, as much as in all your riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. Now really, that should be respect your ways. We'll get to that later on. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. There we go. I don't actually change that in my copy there because it, it is really respect. Sometimes translators want to smooth things out or make it, I guess, more sensible or what they think is understandable to people. But really, that is, I will respect your ways. We'll get to that shortly, but I'll, let's pop this down to the next level where we'll look at the Four things that are for us from the Lord, 
and things that we can do. We can follow the leading of the psalmist here. And here we go. First one's going to be, I will meditate on God's precepts. Now, look at this. They're all going to say, I will, except this, the second one, because it's, I will meditate on your precepts and have respect for God's ways, or your ways. And so we can still put the, the phrase, I will, in it, okay? So, but look at that. I will. That means you will do it. You want to do it. And he, let's say you don't feel like doing it. Uh, I had to make that decision, make that decision back in the 1980s and all. Do I want to be depressed all the time? Of course, I didn't want to be. Really, not really. And so uh, what happened was, essentially, is that uh, I decided I will get out of this with God's help. I will get out of this with God's help. And so, and let me bring it back to the camera. And I'll bring that back up. So I want to get out of this with God's help. So you have to determine, I will, I will. And the first one is, I will meditate on God's precepts, not the precepts of the world. Do not meditate on the things of the world. The world has lots of precepts, what they say. Uh, well, it's none of your business that they do this and that. Now, there is a scripture in God's word that says we are not to be busybodies. But on the other hand, uh, it is our business to be praying for these people and uh, approach them as directed by God's Holy Spirit. So, uh, but don't, you know, we, we want to meditate upon God's precepts. Now, right now, the world wants to distract us in lots of ways. Uh, I put up uh, on Facebook yesterday, I think it was, and sometimes these things hit me one right after the other. And so I put them up. And sometimes people think, are you talking about me? Look, I got 400, what, 50, whatever it is, friends plus, and uh, also I'm on Twitter and all. Look, if God tells me to do something, he tells me to do something. It might be for you, it might not be for you. But it went up there, and I kept hearing this phrase yesterday about new normals, new normals. Uh, this is the new normal, stuff like that, uh, about the heat rising because of climate change. This is the new normal. And uh, for a true Christian, we don't, you know, these new normals don't have to affect us because we have the eternal constancy of Christ. It's the eternal constancy of Christ or the eternal constant of Christ in our life. Years back, I came to the conclusion there's nothing that is stable in this universe. Nothing at all. Not even light is stable. They talk about uh, that's the constant. But yet I think they have seen in some experiments that it may not be constant, even in a vacuum. And I just read in a science book the other day that you can have what they call a vacuum uh, when they made these light bulbs and stuff like that in your vacuum. Let's say you have a perfect vacuum. It's still There's still stuff going through it. Waves and stuff like that. You cannot have a perfect vacuum. And I thought about that years back. But let me go on. I don't want to talk about science. The point I'm making is the only thing that is constant is God. He doesn't change. He made the same. And uh, he's just constant all the time. So people change. Denominations change. Fellowships change. All that. So focus upon God. He doesn't change. Focus upon Jesus Christ in your life if you're saved. You've you got to be saved. Focus upon him. Uh so don't meditate on things of the world. There's what people call out there eye candy. Are you crazy? All right, in other words, uh, sensual images out there of people, whether it be men or women. And then there's lots of politics out there, both sides, fence, and, and sides I never ever heard of. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm a little bit taken aback. I, yeah, last yesterday when I heard about uh, they were talking about taking out the, the, the statues in Charlotte, Charlottesville, I think it was, and they talked about there was a, a unite the right rally there. And I didn't always I don't always pay attention to news. I don't want to be part of that type of right, okay? <laughs> Whereby you're going to be killing people that are brown, you know, or black or whatever, or that they come from China. I don't want to be that type of right. That's not right to me. That's extreme. That's like Nazis. Just, just keep that away from me. I'm conservative, yes. And you, and you are. <laughs> conservative. And yes, we, you know, on right, not left. 
and so we vote conservatively. But I, when I heard about this, I was a little bit perturbed that Unite the Right, you see what they're doing? They're trying to make everyone that's conservative look bad. And I'm not saying the media is doing this, it's the people that go out there and say, Unite the Right. And for all we know, there could be people that are not really, that are uh, conservatives, but they want to make people look bad, okay? So they act this way. And I did not think you'd think that Russia had anything to do with this. Now I've changed my mind. I do believe that Russia is trying to destroy the United States by causing all this tension and all in various ways. So they'll put up rumors and stuff like that. Don't meditate upon that stuff. Meditate upon God's precepts. This doesn't change. When I, when I got saved, that's my insurance card. No. Oh, it's expired, but you don't want to see that. I ain't going to show you my insurance card, right? Okay. So when I got saved, uh, I realized, man, now I have a standard. I have stuff that's going to be there all the time. This does not change. Now, yes, it's different translations, all that. But the actual Word of God does not change. You cannot go back and, 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 you know, and say, okay, we'll be and, and, and change things. That's your usher. Usher, this is your uh, usher. Ushers, yes. yes, yes, this was my my insurance card. This is my usher. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. So when I first got saved, ah, we have a standard here. It doesn't change, and I took that by faith. And I said it before, our faith is not necessarily blind faith. Now, of course, I know more now about the history of this. And and all, and the power of God's word. I know more about it than I did 50 years ago when I first got saved. I know more now. And I could really show people, in my opinion, I could show them. And this is not my opinion, but it's the truth that God's word is powerful. It changes lives to the, to the glory of God. Its prophecies come to pass, and you say, like, yeah, right. I keep telling you, and you know, there's a lot of people out there that are what they were maybe less than 60 years old. And you've all grown up, probably from my age, basically. I, I, got, I was born in 1950, you know, 1950s and all that. So therefore, you people my age, 70, 71, 72, I'm not 70 yet. I'm growing up in that. But there was no Israel. There wasn't Israel. You were, when you were born, there wasn't Israel. So you grew up having a country around called Israel. It wasn't there. The Lord God says it's going to come back, and it came back. The Lord God says it's going to be a highway when Christ comes back. And there, there probably is one now, perhaps. Well, maybe not, I don't know. But there's going to be a highway going from Egypt through Israel up into Syria. Yeah. Infrastructure. There's going to be a highway. And this is so people can come down into Israel and worship the one true God. And it's going to happen. It will happen. It's coming our way. So, but that's it. That's what I meditate upon. I hear these things about politics. I hear things about what they're teaching boys and girls in school. And like our girl said, it's good to have that constant, you know, peace. But at the same time, we're not to be complacent. And that's a very good point. We're not to be complacent. So just because I had the peace of God doesn't mean you all can just go to hell. No. I'm concerned about people, right? Uh, I'm also thinking like, all right, I expect Christ to come back in, in my lifetime, but if he doesn't, i got to be concerned about the next generation and the generation after that. So uh, I have concerns there. So I'm not complacent. You don't want to be complacent. But you do want to have the peace of God that no matter what happens, hey, you know, uh, God's in control, and look, you can send revival and all that. I keep hearing about the critical race theory. I haven't had time to look at what that's about. I just I studied this part of it, okay? So I, we do our studies on Song of Solomon, and I'm studying this, and I should look into what the critical race theory is at all. But if I, if I learn about it, it, it should not worry overly worry me. I might have a concern. I should pray about things and all that, but it should not overly worry you or I if we're saved. We have this constant uh, peace in Christ, okay? Uh, you have an eternal constant in Him, amen. 
So politics, fearful news. I you know, just mentioned that climate change is one example too. Climate change. Uh, well, everything you know, bad now that happens. Climate change. But and also the vaccines. I don't understand our government. Don't they? There's some people that don't just don't take vaccines. Okay. And so you're gonna. Um, I think. Mr. Biden had a, a good idea, 70%, but you're not going to get past that, much past 70%. And what do they do out in, in Washington, D.C.? Well, if you get this vaccine, we'll give you a scholarship or we'll give you a car. You're, you're crazy. You know, if I really think I'm going to benefit from a vaccine, or let's say I might not benefit, but I might be protecting other people, you don't have to bribe me. I'll take the vaccine. But we haven't taken anything like that for years. If we, when we do take stuff, I'm not taking stuff over the counter. I get sick. Because of stuff. <laughs> and also, not all the time. But the uh, thing is, I don't, I'm not, just, I don't think I need it. Okay? And I, I think we're somewhat immune. I would say so. We're not bragging. But we take a loss to supplements for Shackley and all that. So, uh, you know, we, we try to stay healthy. When time comes along, take an extra. It might be bad. <laughs> and then you hear these people that say, Oh, you don't need stuff. Let's just eat properly. How can you eat properly? You ever see what is in one serving, you know, and then you need a serving of this and have a serving of fruit, vegetables, meat, whatever, milk, whatever. You'll be fat. You know? And let me go on. That's not the message. The thing is, we need to look at God's precepts and focus upon those things. All right. But notice what it says here, I will meditate on your precepts. Meditate means to use, meditate upon, study, ponder. To. Also, it can mean, to a degree, to talk, sing, and speak. And that's a good way to memorize Scripture, too, is to sing Scripture. All right? Uh, there are some aspects of these Hebrew words I don't know about this one in particular, but uh, when it says meditate, it means to repeat to yourself over and over again. What some people do is they choose to meditate upon nasty things, and maybe we'll talk about that later on. Uh, you know, this person done wrong to me, and so they just let that roll over their mind over and over again. But no, med meditate upon the Lord at all times. And I, I mean at all times. Practice that. And you'll have a more peaceful life. And just don't meditate and in your head. Open your mouth and tell people. And for that, let's go to Psalm 77, verse 12. I will also meditate on all your works and talk of your deeds. There you go. Not just thinking in your head, but also talking about it. So, when we talk to other Christians, what should be coming out of our mouth? I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of my message here. Okay? But maybe I should say it now. But what should be coming out of our mouth? You know, people go to church, or they meet other Christians, and if you overhear what they're saying, they're talking about, oh, that guy, her husband's a piece of trash. Stuff like that. No! No, talk about God's work. That God can heal a marriage. That God can do it. Amen? God can heal people. Don't walk around saying, i got to live with arthritis. Now, you don't deny that you have arthritis. But don't think that you've got to live with it. Okay? No. Talk the way God wants you to talk. Now, let's get to the next one here. And let me change this on the monitor. So we have it. And we want to get to the next part, and let me get there myself. Okay. Next one. I will have respect to God's ways. Now, that's a little bit stronger than the word that they had in there. Uh, contemplate. It does include contemplating, think about it, okay? But just don't think about it. You, you know what? You want to uplift God's ways. You want to uh, make them 
the priority above everything else. God's ways are always above man's ways. And so bear that one in mind. So have no respect to the evil ways of the world. In other words, don't in other words, don't focus upon them. Don't think, well, maybe they're right and so on. And I, I thank God for all Christians and even people that call themselves Christians, but they're not. But they'll take a stand against these things such as same-sex marriage or whatever. And they'll take a stand. And I thank God for people like that. And so let me bring it back to the camera now a little bit. As I paused, I got to look for you. Okay. So, all right. So have no respect for the evil ways of the world. Uh, one thing that I've done in the past decades and so on, and people don't understand why I do this, you know, there's always been this subtle attempt, and there's been more than subtle too, but there's been subtle attempts to destroy marriage. And so basically what society has done is they start using the term biz for whether the woman is married or not. They have biz. You know, well, they say, well, after all, when people, men get male, they have just mister. You know, I used to get a master in the center. Remember that? Master in the center from the eye doctor. Every now and again, then that comes, still comes in. I'm, not, I'm a mister now. But uh, I used to get male as a master in the center. And uh, that makes it sound like I'm important. Master. No, I don't have a master's degree. All right, master of the But you see, there's several ways to get in there. And so I don't show respect to that. One thing, I I had trouble being a reporter along these lines because uh, sometimes you were expected to be politically correct, not me. Oh, no, 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 no. no. So I, I found ways to work around things like a situation whereby if I'm quoting a lady, and the, the rule was you say Ms. at a certain point, okay? And so uh, what I would do is that I would quote the person and give their full name. And then use the pronoun she, whatever, her, or whatever, as time went on. Or her title, if they had a title. I would use that. But I did not want to be politically correct. And so... Because what happens when you do that, you're caving in to society's values, and society's values are not, they're not, they're not God's values. Don't be fooled by that, okay? All right. Also, question the good ways of the world. You know, what's good? Uh, here's one that has come to my mind just now. About, oh, about, remember when we went to school, uh, they would physically discipline us. You were always good. Right? Didn't one teacher say we should do something bad? So I go, <laughs> that was good. All right. But me, I had my hair pulled out. That I didn't do anything wrong with that. Okay. Had my, I think I had my knuckles picked. Uh, just different things like that. Oh, of course, my mother had the wooden spoon. I told you about that before. But as society, as society progressed, okay, oh, let's do away with it. We're, having, we're cracking out violent boys and girls. You got more violent people now, today, than you ever had before. You, now, you, you've taken out discipline from the home, physical discipline. You've taken out physical discipline from the school, and you got more problems than ever. And I used to talk to someone, I won't say who, that is in the know. They're in the know. And I said, it'd be so nice if they could bring back that, you know, just read the most physical discipline in the school. And this person says they will not do it because more money flows. In other words, oh, we got a problem here. We can't control the problem. Uh, let's spend money here. Let's take care of this. Let's hire, and so on. So more money flows. You ever notice that a lot of times, and even sometimes it happens when Republicans are in office too, but you, you hear sometimes, Oh, we need some more money here to take care of the situation. More funds and all this sort of stuff. No, 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 no. Well, oh, here's another one, too. Most recently, what? President Biden. Now, this is, we're trying to sound you know, political, but you can't help it. We live in a political world. And we said before, we have the constant eternal peace of Christ. Or, like I said earlier, 
uh, the, uh, the eternal constant of Christ in our lives, but we're not to be complacent. Biden wants to extend the period of time that your child is in school by two more years. The, the state will brainwash your children. The National Education Association will do that. Okay? And all. Well, this sounds political. The reason why? Because people are in politics right now. They got their brain in there. Okay? And so, and, and some Christians think, this is good. This is good. No, it's not good. It's not good. If it doesn't match this, it's not good. Boys and girls, well, well let's put it this way. Boys, Jewish boys would call a lot of times, synagogue, stuff like that. Girls at home and all, which is fine. You know, but the parents played a greater role back then than what they do today. You know? So what we have in our society is social abortion whereby you give birth, but then, you know, just give the child to the state. They'll take the child. Yeah. And then after, now it's going to be after, what, 14 years? They're really going to come out messed up. They will. Okay. They can, that is male or female, they'll be thinking, oh, this, oh, you can be whatever you want. You know, you can be, or you can be, let me, let me go on. <laughs> let me go on. So, have respect to God's way. People say, this is outdated. It's not outdated. It's still relevant for today. It's still powerful for today. And so, go with God's ways, how he does things. And there's lots, lots to that. I don't have the time right now. But, you know, our Lord, he is righteous in all his ways. Let's look at another scripture. I believe it's, what, Psalm 145, is it? Psalm 145. And verse 17, let's bring that up on the screen for you. Here we go. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. Now, notice those three little words there. In all his ways, he, he's righteous in all his ways. And I, I could I need to preach on that sometime, okay? Our first church. In North Carolina, there was a deacon there, and I, this the thought actually came across my mind. You know, sometimes you know deacons they're they're helpful, but sometimes not. And I thought, why doesn't God take this man out of the way? <laughs> he was not, you know. But as you go on, you see, you no, know, God keeps them there, so we're trained, and that people seek after the truth, right? And that they take the stand no matter what that deacon or pastor or some officer says in the church, they take a stand for the truth, okay? So God keeps these people there. The same way with these current hotball teachers, false prophets, false teachers and all that. Uh, look, look at how, I won't even mention names. There's some that you, most people will say they are bad. They, they are bad, okay? We know this guy's got three jets and stuff like that, but there's, a, there's the more other names that are more amiable and people trust them and all that. Oh, and, but every now and then they'll come up with some terrible teaching. You know, and I'm thinking, oh God. And once again, the doctor came across my mind. They're still here. They're up. They're older than me. <laughs> they're still here. God. <laughs> well, God's testing people, right? He wants us to get to the truth. Uh, it, this is, look, uh, I can mention some names and I'll mark it in a way. It doesn't matter who it is, okay? Whether it's me or Pat Robertson or Bill Randalls or let me name another one. Jim Baker, okay? Uh, Jonathan Kahn. Always check what we say for God's Word. Now, I mentioned some people just now that I would not really want to spend my time listening to. Okay, I can tell you which one. You know which one I would be listening to. If you listen to the recording. But, uh, you know, you want to hear from God himself. So wherever God decides, he's righteous in all his ways. So when he consigns people, and they are consigned to hell, from, we're all consigned to hell from the time that we're born. And he's righteous in doing that. He's righteous uh, because of his holiness. And we sin against him. If he didn't do that, 
he would be righteous. So uh, there's got to be a hell, and there's got to be a judgment. <laughs> I have to go on about the face of us, how people judge what they, they do. I mean, yeah, if they like the person, they go to heaven. It doesn't matter if they accept the crash or not. If they like the person, it's always rest in peace. Okay. If you don't like a person, you don't say anything, or, or I'm glad, I hope they rot in hell. They'll say that too. You're, you're putting your place, you're putting yourself in place of God. Even if you say R.I.P., rest in peace. You are putting yourself in place of God. Let's get the second part of the verse here. And holy in all the works. Now, right now, our world is tainted with sin. This is a picture that for you is from Salisbury Park. I had taken a couple years back when I was there. And uh, because I want to get some pictures. And that's a nice picture. I mean, that was a beautiful picture. But in that park, there's ducks, and but there's animals that will eat them. See? This world is treacherous. Okay? That looks pretty, but you may not want to stay in that park overnight. <laughs> they won't let you in. They might put you in a zoo because the zoo next to it. Yeah. But uh, but he's holy in all work. So when you come, when Christ comes back. The, the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the earth. Hallelujah. And there will be peace on earth for one thousand years. But you and I, friend, we can have that peace of God right now if we follow these four. I will. So I will have respect to God's ways, not my ways, not the ways of the world. I'm going to have respect to God's ways, even if I don't like them, even if I don't understand them. I am going to have respect to God's ways. And I'm going to trust God no matter what. And if, when you decide to do that, you know, when you decide that you're going to follow God's ways no matter what, and just trust Him for what He has, you'll have the peace of God. Because until then, you'll be struggling. You'll be struggling. Now, number three is, I will delight myself in God's statutes. Right? I will like delight myself God's statutes. You know, we don't, there are some good human laws, but you know, we, we want to delight ourselves in God's statutes. Uh, human laws are all messed up. We'll get them shortly. But uh, they are suggested that there right now. Uh, we ought to delight ourselves in God's statutes, what His laws are, including the ones we don't like. Now, society has trained us not to like what God says about divorce. And not to like what God says about divorce and marriage. And so what some have done, they have twisted scripture, or they put stuff in there. And I respectfully ask you, to, if, if you think that you can go ahead and remarry someone else, and you show me those, that wording in God's word, you cannot show me that wording. That you are allowed after a divorce to remarry someone else. But Matthew says, you're going to have to read into Matthew to get your answer to that one, okay? To get the answer you want. But if we carefully read Matthew and Mark, Luke, Luke 16, 18, and if you go back to Malachi, and by what it says in Malachi, God does not change. And he says over Malachi chapter 2, he hates the divorce. He has not changed his mind. So we've got to decide, all right, this kind of rubs me the wrong way. I've been married, what, five times and stuff like this. You know, this kind of, this is stepping on my toes. Let it step on your toes. And then ask God to forgive you and go from there, my friend, okay? So, uh, so there's things that we don't like. God says also, vengeance is mine. I will repay. But I would love so much to get back at that person. Okay? They put trash in my lawn, I'll put it on their lawn. Okay? Uh, so, in other words, I'll trash their lawn with my trash. Okay? Now, sometimes you do have to teach some people certain things, okay, in a nice way. But you don't do it at vengeance. So I've done it before whereby there's been trash in our lawn that came from somewhere else, and I just put it back on the lawn that came from. I'm not being mean, I'm just letting the person know that belongs to you. 
maybe if I put out trash, you don't want that trash. Huh? Well, I'll just put it back on your side. So, but delight yourself in God's statutes. But vengeance is forbidden. Unforgiveness is forbidden. Yeah, there's a number of people out there I've met over the years, especially while well, we've been in Dorchester County of August, really. We're not slamming Dorchester County. We've been here the longest. But uh, let me bring it back to the camera. So we're, just, we're still here. We're still here. <laughs> you know, but uh, we've been here the longest. And I've heard so many, so many, so many people that are unforgiving. You know, but yet, they're, they're a very good person. They go to church. You know, but they're unforgiving. And there you go. Let go of the unforgiveness. So I should have brought back the other one because we're on number four anyhow. And oh, well, no, we need Philippians yet, okay? Uh, but keep in mind that you know, we are to delight in God's statutes, not human law. And the fact is, is that if we're saved, guess what we are? We are citizens of heaven. And that's the way I should read. Let's go now to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, that is good to keep in mind. If you and I are citizens of heaven, then we need to act like that. Act upon it. Amen. And not uh, think, okay, I'm a, you know, I'll do whatever the country wants me to do. No, not necessarily, my friend. Do not do that, okay? Now, let me, uh, let's go back one more time at least to this page here with the outline. Here we go. And I should send it over you. I didn't do that. I know that. Like I said before, I'm the only one doing this because that's it. You know. Alright. Last one. I will remember. So far we have, I will meditate on God's precepts. I will have respect to God's ways. I will delight myself in God's statutes. This one, I will remember at all times God's work. And that is the last part of verse 16. I will not forget your work. So when you punch that time clock, you're still to go with God's work. And remember God's work at all times. If you... Let's say you are rightfully single, and you go on a date. You don't forget. You don't forget God's work. You keep that in mind. You go to school. You do not forget God's work. You do not stop being a Christian because you punch a time clock, or because you walk through the school doors, or you went somewhere. You went to Walmart. You don't stop being a Christian if you are a Christian. You know that. So I will not forget your work. So. And don't let God's word be crowded out of your mind by the things of this world. And that's what the world is just trying to crowd out. And have you focused upon politics or fearful things such as the critical race theory and whatever else out there, okay? And once again, see, I don't know that much specifically about these things, but yeah, you should. But I think my main ministry is to study this and then bring it to you. And if you, you know, there's other people that have that ministry to look at these things like critical race theory, that's their ministry. And and they deal with that and they, they help you understand that and work with it. But mine is to look at God's word, analyze it, and do my best to give it to you and present it my best possible. I try to change that all the time for the better. So do not let God's word be crowded out of your mind by the things of this world. In fact, you should be having a feast on God's word throughout the day. Man, you know, uh, it, it, it's 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 spiritual food for our souls. And let's look now at what Jeremiah says over in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Oh, a beautiful passage. I, I wish I could preach on all these. If we're called by the name of Christ, shouldn't we be feeding upon His Word and rejoicing in God's Word? Even though we may not like some things that we read, like, 
Facebook hook from maybe some time back when Jimmy was turning the HD. He goes, oh, come on. Let me punch you in the nose. <laughs> Don't hold grudges. Things like that. But the thing is, no, you rejoice in God's words. Your words were found, I ate them. And the more you eat, the more you will enjoy God's word. The more you read God's word, the more you study it, the more you memorize it, the more you will enjoy it. If you have a problem with that, ask God to help you, he will. And he will help you to enjoy his word. The thing is, we're in the last days, too. Now, when I want to say last days. We're the last days of the church age. I would say that. And we're in the last days of the Gentile age. And things are not going to get easier in the world. Now, for the Christian, like I said, like I said before, we have the eternal constant of Christ in our lives. And so, yeah, we should be thinking upon God's words. I remember, you know, I will not forget your words. So even when we're under attack, we should be feasting upon God's word. Let's go back to that scripture over in the Psalm 23, verse 5, the very first line of that. What does it say, the very first line? You prepare a table before me. Where? Smack dab. I'm going to say smack dab. That's my translation. That's my paraphrase. Smack dab in the presence of my enemy. Right there. So right now, we're having, I'm having a feast in God's word, okay? Right now, I'm not that much under attack, although I am. You know, not like these people across the streets, definitely. No one's burning down our house. No one's trying to act my head open. They're not doing that. But they'll do other stuff online. And so I'm, but I'm having a feast of God's word. Okay? And we need to talk about more of that lesson. Sometimes we ask for the trouble that we get. Okay? If you're dabbing in sin, then you're, you'll be asking for trouble. But if you don't dab on sin, you'll still come under fire. But thing is, feast upon God's word, and you know, God prepares a table for us right there in the presence of enemies. We gotta be in God's word. We gotta respect God's word. Once again, let's review these. I will meditate upon God's precepts. If you want the peace of God, meditate upon God's precepts. I will have respect. Say that. I will have respect to God's ways. I will delight myself. God's statutes, and I will remember at all times God's word, I will not forget your word. Amen. This is how you can establish the peace of God in your life. Friend, if you don't have the peace of God, we invite you now to come to him. We invite you to find that peace. The only way to find that peace is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't want to do that because they know deep down inside will take away their sin. And a lot of people enjoy their sin. And, but, you know, we got to get to that point whereby we're tired of sinning. We don't want to sin anymore. We're concerned about our salvation, things like that. And so, friend, if you want the real, true peace of God now, and let it grow in you, and let it get stronger, stronger, course of time. If you want to make peace with God, pray this prayer to me. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I am in my name. Oh, Father, help me, Lord, to live for you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, if you have prayed that prayer, we have a couple of things for you on the internet. We have a message titled, Seven Roots for Growth in Christ. You'll find that at archive.org and also at my pages at sapphirestreams.com and maybe elsewhere too. I'll try to have up in more places. I do maintain anywhere from about five or six websites. So I'll try to have that in more places. Also, we have some lessons for you right now. Basic Elms of Christianity. That's at sapphirestreams.com forward slash bdc forward slash all those three studies for free. You don't have to register. Just start taking our first lesson. Find out all these. And then just follow the course. The love lesson, hopefully, we'll get some done. <laughs> I don't know when. Okay. But we'll get some more finished for you. Amen. But right now, we do want to go to prayer. 
and that's part of serving the Lord is to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we'll do that now. And uh, the first one is from where? Uganda. So here's the one from Uganda, and we'll pray for that one. Anifa is 19 years old and came to faith in Christ earlier this year. She had been suffering from seizures and received healing through prayer at a Christian church. Her mother, a radical Muslim, became enraged at her daughter's conversion and threw her out of their home. Her mother also cursed her and threatened to have her killed. After Anifa's mother kicked her out, she moved in with her aunt, who is also a Christian. Anifa was enrolled in tailoring classes, but her aunt is planning to relocate to South Sudan, and Anifa will be looking for a home once again. Pray for Anifa to remain firm in her faith as she faces trials, and pray for safety and peace of mind as she re rebuilds her life. Lord, I just pray for Anifa that you might just continue helping her to grow in you. I thank you that she's committed her life to you, but I pray that you might just blessing her, and uh, especially during this time, that you might help her to find uh, a place that she can uh, dwell in safety. I pray that you might be able to uh, continue her faith in you also. And I pray for her family, that you might help them to come to know you as their personal Savior. I just pray that you might convict them and bring them uh, to you. And this we ask in your name and for your sake. Amen. Iran. International Christian Concern. On June 21st, the charge of propaganda against the Islamic regime was upheld against three Christian converts, Amin, Haki, Malad, Gudarzi, and al Reza Nur Muhammad Ali, standing trial in the Revolutionary Court of Karaj in northern Iran in a hearing that took less than an hour. On the 26th, they received the maximum sentence of five years in prison and were fined. Pray for protection for Christian converts in Iran. Pray for any discriminatory laws in the nation to be overturned. And pray for charges against these three believers to be dropped. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are all powerful. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you, you're doing work in Iran uh, throughout the world, too. I thank you, Lord, for many reports that we hear. What's happening in Iran? Same thing that happened in China years back. And you're also still working in China. Father, we pray for these three guys that you help them, Lord, in prison, undergirded by the Holy Spirit, and help the charges to be dropped against them. We pray for the discriminatory laws to uh, be overturned in Iran. And we also pray for protection of Christians in Iran. For those that are working, bringing the word in. Iran and also Iraq and places like that. We ask for protection. We thank, thank you for uh, the mirror that we heard the first time back about the one guy. I mean, but Father, we thank you for that and we pray to meet this need in the English class. And Father, we pray for that one sister that was uh, really hard of secretary at NBI to protect her body. We ask that you help her Lord to be able to walk and your legs and knees. We pray for others that I have seen on the internet that have had prayer requests. And we ask, oh God, that you meet those needs. Even now, I pray also for one person whose Facebook profile is not active right now. And Father, they're in, they're in what should I say, trouble, whatever. They're facing difficulties. Father, help this person to quit pulling around and be dedicated to you. Help them to come to you, Father. Help them realize that if they would stop pulling around and be truly, truly dedicated to you and not hang on to stuff and say that their life would be more of an upswing as time goes on. Things will overturn for them, perhaps, you know, for their favor. And we pray you just meet this need. And again, we pray for those that are saved that are watching, listening. We pray you touch your hearts. We pray for those that are saved. Help them to grow in you, we ask. In the name of Christ, amen. Join us tonight at the Cornerstone Assembly. We meet at a church called the River at Sanctuary No. 2, 450 Cab Street in Cambridge, Maryland. And then also getting at 7 p.m. And then again, 7 p.m. Thursday, we'll be studying Song of Solomon. So uh, join us there.
And we're so glad that you joined us. And like we said before, many times in this message, we're at the end times, okay? We're at the last days, the last days, okay? And man, Christ is coming back. Right now, we can have that uh, eternal constant of Christ, but we look for Christ when he comes back, when he rules and reigns on earth for a thousand years. And so, we say, Maranatha! Maranatha.